Hello, precious one. Welcome to Holy Frequency. I'm your brother in Christ, Samuel and your mentor. And today we are focusing on uh, 70 functions of the Holy Spirit. It's part of our series, Getting to Know the Holy Spirit. Hello, precious one. It's such a blessed opportunity to interact with you again. So we are starting our 70 functions of the Holy Spirit. This is part one, part one. So in part one, I'm giving you 10 functions. So number one, the Holy Spirit leads and directs us. He leads and directs us. That's the function of the Holy Ghost, to lead and direct us. So in Romans chapter 8, verses 14, the Bible says that for all who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. So God's Spirit is also the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is also the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Light also the Holy Spirit. So for those who are led by God's Spirit, who are led by the Holy Spirit, are God's children. So you have to be led by the Holy Spirit, not led by the world, not led by the flesh, not led by uh, lies and, 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 and you know evil and sin and all of that. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit leads us and he directs us. So point two, the Holy Spirit speaks in to and through us. So Hebrews 37 says that, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, if you hear his voice, so the Holy Spirit speaks to us. He speaks through us and he speaks in us. So he talks to us personally, a personal conviction, a personal communication. He communicates the plans of God to us, to our heart. Number two, also speaks through us. To other people so Holy Spirit can speak through you to someone else to encourage someone to inspire someone to elevate someone you understand very important the Holy Spirit speaks to us so that we would not do something or encourage us to do something point three the Holy Spirit gives power to cast out devils now in Matthew chapter 12 verses 20 the Bible says that but if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God then the kingdom of God has come to you now this is Jesus when he cast out devils and people were telling him that he's casting out devils with Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And Jesus told them that if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is upon you. So the Holy Spirit gives us the power to cast out devils, to deal with demons, to deal with witchcraft, occultic powers, powers that are contrary to the power of God. Point four. The Holy Spirit releases power. He releases power to us. In Luke chapter 4, verses 14, the Bible says that, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the regions round about. So he went in the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit gives us power. The power to take decisions, the power to do miracles, the power to, you know, uh, do wondrous things for God, the power to live a holy life, the power to live for God, the power to dedicate our lives for him holy. Then point five, the Holy Spirit anoints, the Holy Spirit anoints. Now in Acts chapter 10 verses 38, the Bible says that how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and he, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So the Holy Spirit anoints. How Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. He was anointed. So you can be anointed with the Holy Ghost. When someone is anointed, the person has a special empowerment for a special task. So may the Holy Ghost empower you. May the Holy Ghost anoint you right now. Point six. The Holy Spirit comes upon or falls on. Now, if we read Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, we see the Bible said that when Jesus Christ was being baptized, what happened? The Holy Ghost came upon him like a dove. He came upon him like a dove. He descended upon him like a dove. And this happens to almost all of us. Sometimes in a situation where, you know, people just black out and they are, they, their minds go blank, that is when the Holy Ghost steps in to give you the wisdom to speak at that particular point in time. There are situations in our lives where we are facing a certain challenge. I heard a testimony of a man of God who was encountered with a gun by armed robbers. And he took his Bible. And when he took his Bible, he says that in the name of Jesus, freeze. And, Bible, and according to the testimony, all the armed robbers froze. They could not move. So he called the police to come and arrest them. 
So you see, this is the Holy Ghost at work who came upon that man of God to do that wondrous thing. So it's powerful. He comes upon you. He comes upon you with full power, with strength, with wisdom. He comes upon you to do something, to perform a certain task. Now, it also happens that you might not have the healing gift or the healing anointing, but at the point where it's needed, the Holy Ghost can come upon you for you to operate in that anointing to glorify God. Point seven, the Holy Spirit baptizes and fails. Mark 1 and 8, Bible says that I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. When we talk about baptism, it means to immerse. And you see, baptism is the, the sign of our relationship, the physical sign of our relationship with God. So the Holy Spirit also is the spiritual sign that we are children of God. It's the spiritual sign that we are vessels being used by God. So he said that Jesus will baptize us with the Holy Spirit. He will fill us with the Holy Spirit. You understand? So when he baptizes them, he immerses you in the Holy Ghost. So all your life, you have to walk and live and practice and do things that shows that you have the Holy Spirit. Point eight. The Holy Spirit gives new birth. Now, when we say new birth, we are referring to being born again, being born into Christ. This does not happen by the words you speak. It happens by the works of the Holy Spirit. It is not by works that we are saved. It's because of the Holy Spirit. So in John chapter 3, verses 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So except a man is born of water, the physical sign of baptism, and of the Holy Ghost, and of the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So new birth or being born again is as a result of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that does these things. It helps us to become born again. So when someone says that I believe in my heart and I confess that Jesus came to die for me and you see that deeply it's coming from the depth of the person's heart. It's the Holy Spirit that brings about the new birth. It's not the power in your words that brings new birth. It's not the power of a man of God who said you are born again that brings new birth. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. That point nine, the Holy Spirit leads into worship. Bible said in John chapter 4 verses 23 that by the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit in the Holy Ghost and in truth. So he leads us into true worship. He leads us into a holy worship. He leads us into the sanctuary of God. Very important. So when we are talking about worship, you see worship is not limited to the number of songs you sing. It's not limited to the crowd lifting up their hands at the same time. Worship is deep. It's a deep spiritual exercise. And you see, it is the true worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth. And the Holy Ghost is the one who will lead them to worship and fellowship with God in that manner. You see, human being is spirit, has a soul, and lives in the body or the flesh. Now, the body or the flesh makes us conscious of this world. The soul makes you conscious of yourself, of your decisions, of your emotions. And the spirit makes you conscious of God. So when the Holy Spirit leads you, comes upon you, dwells in you, then he can lead you to worship God in the Holy Ghost. Worship God rightly. So it doesn't matter whether you worship in temples or in mountains. I just said this guy with a Samaritan woman. What matters is having the Holy Spirit. And when you have the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter where you are. You can always be in the spirit. You can always communicate with God. Point 10. The Holy Spirit flows like a river from the spirit man. As I just said, human being is made up of what a spirit has a soul and then lives in a body. So your spirit man, the real you, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit begins to flow out of you. Bible says, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. In John chapter 7, verses 38, it will flow out of you. And when the Holy Ghost flows out of you, you realize that living a holy and a righteous life becomes effortless. Overcoming sin becomes effortless. Being good to your neighbor becomes effortless. Loving God becomes something you want to do willingly. You pursue God because he loves you, because he comes after you. Thank you so much, brethren, for tuning in with me today too. We are talking about 70 
functions of the Holy Spirit. And I know it's going to be a great, 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 great blessing unto you. This is part one. And we just spoke about 10 functions. So make sure you watch part two, which is also going to be from point 11 to point 20. And you are going to be blessed knowing the Holy Spirit and genuine with the Holy Ghost. If you are blessed with this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Leave your feedback in the comment section and share this video for friends and family. And then don't forget to subscribe. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.